So you're interested in finding out about what artificial intelligence can do for or will do to your business in the next few years? You've come to the right place. My name is JF. I'm a professor at HEC, one of Canada's leading business schools located right here in Montreal, which has become one of the epicenters for artificial intelligence around the world. I've been dealing with AI and neural networks ever since the early 2000s with my hands right there in the dirt. But now I focus more on value creation for business and organizations through the Creative Destruction Labs, AI and supply chain streams right here in Montreal, as well as the Next AI program for entrepreneurs and through my own ventures as well. In this video, I'll be explaining the basic elements of what should be taken into consideration if you're going to be exploring the implications and potential benefits of AI for your business. So this is what Python code looks like. But rest assured, you don't need to be an expert in math or computer science in order to understand what AI can do for you or for your business. You really only need to look at the way you learn. You probably don't remember this, but the first time you saw a dog, you were probably fascinated, and your parents came around and said, Oh, look, a dog! Then you saw a second one, and your parents reinforced what you had just learned by saying that this was indeed another dog. But then you probably went to your parents' friend's house and saw another furball with four legs and a tail and maybe thought this was another dog. But no, your parents said, this one's a cat. And after a few dogs and a few cats, you were able to distinguish between a dog and a cat. You were able to generalize what a cat was and what a dog was. And this is exactly how machines learn as well in the context of artificial intelligence. And in the end, they're able to make predictions about certain aspects, certain topics, or certain facts that you want them to generalize about. Think, think of translation, for example. You want to translate a document from English to French. There is a word in there called for. Now, depending on the meaning of that word in the sentence, you will have two different possible translations for the very same word. Now, generalize that in the context of a natural conversation with hundreds of words and you've got a compelling case for the use of artificial intelligence and push that to the limit and you have a device like the Travis Translator. Do you know how I can go to the nearest hotel? Thank you, In the same way, you can feed a machine with actual driving situations and the actual driving behavior of good drivers and you've got a Tesla that's able to drive you from point A to point B in a truly autonomous way or feed a machine with data about how you turn up or down the air conditioning or heating in your house and ultimately you might come up with an intelligent thermostat like Nest which will now regulate your home automatically for you. Or feed it with the very worst songs ever and you might just get a Celine Dion album. And the list goes on and on. Okay, okay, so you get what AI is, but you might be thinking, eh, that's kind of far away from the context of my business. Why bother, at, especially at this point, right? Well, three main reasons why you should bother and why you should bother right now. Reason number one is we're stuck with a labor shortage in the Western world for at least the next couple of decades. And in that context, it's imperative that we're able to get fewer employees able to do more, that we turn them into superhumans in some way. And AI is the perfect assistant to do exactly that. And we'll see examples of that in a few moments. The second reason is, as always, because your competitors are going to do it. And if you don't, you'll be left behind as they become more efficient. Think of what e-commerce has done to the retail industry. You don't want to be left behind. You want to adapt and change at least as fast as your competitors. Otherwise, you'll be losing market share and you might even be more likely not to survive the next few decades. And the last reason is probably the most fundamental of all. Because AI enables new ways of solving complex problems, it will also pave the way to new industries. And your competitors of tomorrow might not even be the ones you have today because not only your organizations will have changed, but so will your entire industry. Just think of this recent announcement at MIT where they discovered what is likely to be the most powerful antibiotic since penicillin. That was not discovered 
by chemists and pharmacists dealing with test tubes in a lab. It was developed through AI. The competition for pharmaceutical companies in the future will be a bunch of computer scientists and mathematicians, not pharmacists. Okay, so what can AI do for you specifically in terms of value creation? Well, you know, AI can do a lot of stuff. We've just seen that. But let's break that down into three broad categories that have to do with the value proposition of any product, service, or organization. And that is AIs that can solve pains, AIs that can create gains, and AIs that can simplify jobs to be done. Now, those three categories can be seen in the eyes of the customers, obviously, because happier customers make for more value being created through referral, through more loyalty, through a willingness to pay higher prices, etc. But those can also be seen in the eyes of your employees, because employees also create a lot of value, either through higher efficiency, better talent acquisition or retention, contagion of happiness to your own customers, and the list goes on and on. So let's start with pains. Simply stated, pains are the annoying parts of doing business with you, either as a customer or as an employee. They're basically those redundant tasks that nobody likes to do, but that need to be done anyways. For instance, take any company that has to answer requests for proposals or RFPs. Those are usually a pain in the butt for all of the organizations that need to do it, but they don't have a choice if you're going to do business with the government or with any form of big project. And the RFPs are a pain because they are long and they are complex. There's a lot of information to be dug up about past projects, for example, or the resumes of the contributors and the specific resources you'll be using and their availability. And there's costing analysis on top of that. Plus, because RFPs are never the same, there's very little information that can be used from one RFP to another, meaning that you have to start all over again every time you want to answer a specific request for proposal from any kind of organization whatsoever. And worst, because those are typically filled out by people who would otherwise be available for billable hours, RFPs can end up just being costly just to fill out without any guarantee of success whatsoever. Now, what if you could train an AI to understand requests for proposals and fill them out automatically for you? Wouldn't that sound great? Well, a startup I've had the privilege of working with at uh, the Creative Destruction Lab called Redoc does just that. And it's providing a competitive edge to all of its customers, starting with big consulting groups for whom requests for proposals are bread and butter. In other words, Redoc alleviates the pain of answering requests for proposals. Now let's move to gains, which are typically what doesn't necessarily exist in your organization, but that if you were to invent it, your customers and or employees would certainly appreciate. For instance, let's say you have a 15,000 acre hunting ranch down in Texas and you have big ticket customers coming into your ranch wanting to hunt deer or ostrich, for example. Now, maybe for some customers, the whole experience of hunting comes down to the journey of actually finding what it is you're going to kill in the end. But for those customers paying a hefty price to come to your place, it might be all about results, right? So let's say my company comes to you and says, I'll install a hundred wireless solar powered cameras on your ranch so you can monitor the various species on your property. Now, what if I told you that I could also add to my camera an artificial intelligence that would automatically detect what exactly is the kind of species that it has just seen so that whenever your customers say, I want to chase deer today, those cameras would be able to pinpoint exactly where to go. Now that would be a huge gain over a wireless camera, wouldn't it? Well, another creative destruction lab company called Vosker is doing just that. And it's turning hunting into a seamless and efficient journey. And finally, AIs can simplify jobs. Jobs are typically what your customers or your employees have to do in order to create or acquire value from you. It's also called the customer journey in most marketing textbooks. For example, say you have a big and important event two days from now and you need a new shirt. Typically, you would probably take your car, drive to the mall, park it there, get out of your car, get into the mall, find a shop, 
try on shirts, eventually make a decision, buy it, pay for it, get back into your car, drive back home, and that would be the end of your journey. Or you might just open up your laptop computer, Google something like dress shirts for sale, locate a store and a shirt within that store that you like, then click buy, enter your credit card information and just wait for the shirt to be delivered to your house. Either way, those are the jobs that you have to complete in order to buy a new shirt. Now, what if an AI could learn your tastes about shirts based on your past purchasing behavior, what it is you've already bought, but also based on the pictures you have uploaded on Facebook, depending on different types of situations and contexts, what it is you like to wear. Now what if you shared your schedule with that very same AI so that it would know you have this big event coming in two days, enabling it to document itself with regards to the dress code for that event, and then not only make recommendations in terms of the shirt you should be wearing that night, but literally order it for you without you even having to intervene. Now, that would simplify your job of having to buy a shirt to its very bare essentials. That's a model that would be called ship, then shop, and it's just been patented by no other than Amazon. And it's all powered by AI. So if you're really interested in using artificial intelligence to create value, the very first step should be to come up with a list of pains that could use some solving, gains that could be created and jobs that need to be performed and that could be simplified. And to do that, you need input from customers, employees, managers and executives in order to come up with an exhaustive list or as exhaustive a list as possible. Then, like with anything in business, you will need to prioritize. Which of those gains, pains or jobs are the most important and crucial to solve? In order to generate value, either externally for customers or internally for your employees. And that's the starting point. And one word of advice, beware of the hype. You don't want to end up with that Connie robot concierge developed by IBM Watson for Hilton hotels. Project between Hilton and IBM. Bells and whistles do not create value in the long run. In fact, pretty much only humans can create value in the long run. So you want to be aware of replacing employees with robots and technologies, especially in the context of human interactions between your company and its customers, because that's where you'll end up destroying value instead of creating some. For instance, Human First is a startup that provides AI for call centers. It's not about replacing call center agents, it's about making them super agents. As it listens in on the calls, it basically provides relevant information that agents can pass on to the caller, making, again, call agents super call agents. And in the world where call centers often see up to 300% employee turnover every year, this is a technology that's both welcome by the company itself and its employees, let alone customers. So you've got your prioritized and rank ordered list of pains, gains and jobs to simplify. Now the time comes to move from the realm of vision ambition to that of feasibility. And when it comes to AI, projects really need two things, resources and data. Resources, namely the technological and human resources that are necessary to complete any form of AI project, used to be the main impediment when it came to AI. Now, times have changed greatly. The cost of computing has gone down. The cost of megaflops and gigabytes of memory, for example, have gone down dramatically over the last few years. And it used to be that you needed a PhD in either mathematics or computer science in order to be able to develop and program machine learning algorithms. But tools have started to emerge and training programs have also popped up so that people with master's degree now are qualified enough to solve the vast majority of any organization's simple AI problems. In fact, the real challenge remains data. And it's not because we lack data from a humankind perspective. We produce 2.5 quintillion bytes of data every day. That's 2,500 billion, billion bytes of data. That's a lot of data. But the problem is most of that data is not in the public domain, so it cannot be purchased or accessed from the people who've actually generated it. 
And in other cases, companies and organizations have a lot of data, but it's either badly structured, it's not accessible, or it's just plainly all over the place. But the biggest problem is that sometimes the data that is needed for a specific project just doesn't exist yet. Think about Montreal's Theo Taxi project, which went bankrupt about a year ago now. The company needed to be able to predict where demand would pop up in order to deploy its fleet accordingly. Now, to be able to make that prediction, the models required a lot of information, a lot of variables. For example, the current date and time, for example, demand is not the same on a Sunday afternoon than it is on a Tuesday night. It also required information about the weather, about the fact that the Montreal Canadiens hockey team was playing or not that night, but what it really needed was information about the points of origin, destination for specific customers here in Montreal. And that information at the time when Theo Taxi went into business simply did not exist. So Theo Taxi would have to put taxis on the road just to generate this information that was crucial to its business model in the first place. So for every single pain, gain, and job you have identified before, the question becomes what kind of data is required in order to make a prediction about them? Is this data available somewhere? At what cost? And do you have resources internally or externally that can do the programming and the setup of this model for you? And again, at what cost? That should now enable you to complete a matrix where you can evaluate what you would most like to do in light of what you can actually do. And by the way, this always comes with a bit of uncertainty because in any AI project, you basically know when you start, but you don't know when you finish. In other words, artificial intelligence usually tends to provide big leaps in performance early on, but it tends to flatten up past a certain point. That's when you need to add more data, but sometimes you also need to consider more variables and you can really never know from the get-go how many data points you're going to be requiring and how many variables are going to be enough. So you might set targets when it comes to performance thresholds, but there's no guarantee that you'll even be able to achieve them. Of course, all of this is easier said than done. That's why there's plenty of resources out there to help out, and I'm personally very happy to provide three services if you ever need them, starting with strategic discussions for executives and entrepreneurs. And bear in mind that eligible companies might be entitled to an 85% discount of the price of up to six days of on-site training, hands-on workshops, strategy development discussions through the Skill AI Supercluster and HEC Montreal. And because facing change is never easy in any company, organization, or industry, I'm also available for public speaking. Here in Canada, please contact the Horizon Speakers Bureau for that. And in all cases, please feel free to contact me directly. I'll be happy to answer any questions or concerns you might have. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Who knows what might come next? <laughs>